looking at four of America's most ticklish <laughs> sports riders. And today, C-H-A-D, dun, dun, dun. Oh. The return of the Swiss cheese defense for the Chiefs. And LSU's rocky finish that put the balls on top. There's 10 topics, but just one winner. Horn time. It's Around the Horn, presented by Nissan. Here's Tony Reale. All right. Welcome back to the show that scores the argument. Let's say hello to our national panel. Our returning champ in the city of Boston, ESPN.com's Michael Smith. I had a full day to think about it, Tony, and I have nothing clever to say. But then again, why does that make this different from any other day, right? All right, we got the point. Trying to knock him off at the LA Times, J.A. Adande. Hey, Tony, would you like to tickle my monkey? Ooh, that didn't sound Ooh. good. Oh, I get some mute right there. On the road in Detroit City today, Jay Mariotti. That is the all-time wins leader in this program. It's time to win on the road. I'm not trying to have any of that. And live from New York, the pizza's Woody Page. I pulled a hamstring. I thought you oh. did. Guys, let's make it happen right Where's now. Go to work. It's the first word. J-E-T-S, gulp, gulp, gulp. New York's worst fears realized yesterday when Chad Pennington was lost for the season with a torn rotator cuff. Second straight year with shoulder problems for him. And after a quick perusal of the usual suspects, the team today signed once in future greenhead Vinny Testaverde, who had been residing at Del Boca Vista. Gentlemen, we all know this is a team that plays to win the game. Do you foresee much winning with Vinny at QB? Let's start out with Michael Smith. That's the question. I think they will with Vinny Testaverde or with Brooks Bollinger or whoever they play at quarterback, and here's why. Oh, with, with, with Chad Pennington, I like Chad, don't get me wrong. But we're not talking about a special quarterback. This isn't like Atlanta losing Michael Vick or Indianapolis losing Peyton Manning. Chad Pennington is an average NFL quarterback. Let's, let's be real about it. So when you're talking about the New York Jets and the way that they play football, they're going to win with who, whoever is under center, turning around, handing the ball off to number 28, Curtis Martin. They're going to win with defense, and John Abraham is playing as well as anybody in the league. Everybody sweats Dwight, Dwight Freeney, but Abraham is playing like a man possessed. They're going to win on defense and special teams, keeping games close and playing to win the game at the end. Their quarterback position does not require a guy with a big arm. They're not, they're not, they're not trying to win. Right, so let me get this straight, Michael. What you're saying is the Jets in the AFC can yes. win with Vinny Testaverde or Brooks I'm Bollinger? Saying they, could, they can win about nine games with this team as oh, president constituted. Man. Yes. Woody Page, what do you think? Well, Michael, I loved that argument. I thought you made so much sense. But let me give you a, a few things to consider. How about at Baltimore, at Buffalo, at Atlanta, against Tampa yeah, Bay. Like look at the schedule, at schedule, Michael. <laughs> if you looked at the schedule, you'd see they're going to lose the next four games. How are they going to oh, win nine on. games? How are they going to be a factor in the division? How are they going to be a second wild card team? They got no chance to even finish the season. They might as well call it quits. All you know right, what? <laughs> we'll call you quits right there. Mariotti, go Smith, ahead. What are you talking about? This guy wasn't in any training camp. He had to pick up the phone and call call them they didn't call him come on they're gonna stack the the line against curtis martin and their defense they've been doing that rave about smith their defense has been very inconsistent remember week one they Three were games. terrible they were fighting on the sideline <laughs> that team is cooked take it from me reality oh, yeah? i've seen bad quarterbacking situations unfortunately this kid's career may be over they well, we'll get to, to that to in a scratch. second all right but you know what you have to do you can't sit there as an organization and say we're going to tank it and hope for matt leinert because they have too much talent there to do that they have a responsibility exactly. to try to win okay. in new york to do <laughs> all that. right don they go ahead no there's no point in beating me mediocre that's the worst thing you can be right now and i think when testaverde gets up to speed speed being a relative term right here I think they can win a few games just enough to keep them out of the Matt Liner Derby. They're not going to the playoffs, though, Michael Smith. Here's the problem. You want to be in the Derby. You want to get Matt Liner. You need to start thinking long-term replacing. Now, this is the second time Pennington's had his shoulder operated on. We don't know if it will ever be effective any, again, so you need to work on finding a replacement. Do we think? That's why I pray Brooks Bollinger, who... Oh, well, enough of oh, Brooks please. Bollinger. They have Vinny ah. Testaverde. They're going to play Vinny Testaverde. Do we think the Jets' future week. is with Chad Pennington, Michael Smith? Do you think he can be well, their well, quarterback for the future? Well, fine. Financially, he's going to be the, be on the team. I mean, they gave him $23 million in bonuses last year, a $64 million contract. What a mistake it looks like that was. But they have to start looking long-term and figuring out they can get a young guy in there to start developing, maybe give Chad one more shot. Woody Page? What, a prominent New York physician said this morning that the second time you have this sort of injury, 
you Good have point, very diminished arm strength. He didn't have much arm strength to begin Back, with. Absolutely. And the fear of having did. another one. No, he is not the future. They have got to, the Mariotti, Jets have got to go in another future? direction I, I agree immediately. With Woody. If this is a serious injury, Chad's career is probably over. You have to try to keep winning with veterans, but somewhere in the draft next year, you've got to find a young quarterback and groom this kid to eventually start. Last word of Donde. Why not try to find Matt Leinart then? Yeah, anytime you're on a first name basis with the people in Dr. James Andrews' pick. office, that's a bad it's, news for it's your It's quick and easy to say Matt Leinart today, Adonde. Who knows when the Jets are drafting next season. Don't forget, this was a team that went to the playoffs, won a game last year, was a play away from going to the AFC Championship game. Doesn't when Quincy like Carter last year, year. playing. Well, it was Pennington at the end of the season. Now over to last night's Monday Night Beatdown. Broncos all over the Chiefs. Sorry about that, Chief. Denver with a 30-10 win. Return of El Matador defense from KC brings the Chiefs back to the pack in the AFC West. Tied with the Bronx at 2-1. San Diego is 1-2, and the Raiders are over. So, fellas, here's a question with endless possibilities. What do you like in this division? <laughs> Woody Page, what do you like? Well, who's laughing at me today? Go ahead, laugh at me. Yeah. No, like I laughing said, at you ah, today. Ah. Uh, I mean, the Denver Broncos showed you last night why I thought this was a Super Bowl team before the season started. If Plummer plays under control, yeah. limits – Limits his turnovers, gets outside the pass rush. He throws great on the run. They got their running game back last night. Did you see Rod Smith? Did you see that defense? Trevor Price, who was one of the best defensive linemen in the league a couple of years ago, was hurt last year, was a dominating force last night. Those former Cleveland Browns rejects played well. You've got a team with the best set of linebackers, fast linebackers overall in the entire league. They exposed the Chiefs. The Chiefs still cannot stop the running game. That, that was, was the clear. problem last year. All right, we're going to stop your running game right now. Adon, they go ahead. Who do you like in the yeah, AFC stop West? Stop running your mouth, Woody. I'm not going with the Broncos. Woody, you're probably jumping around your apartment. You're so excited about your Broncos. You probably didn't even notice that Champ Bailey went down with a hamstring injury and his shoulder's hurting him. That's going to affect their secondary. You can talk One about week. Your, your, One your running, week. your linebackers or your defensive linemen, whatever. The secondary, he's going to be hurt for a while. I'm, that's going to happen. So who do you also, like, Also, what happens when someone I like the Chargers with their running game. It's all about oh, establishing the run in the NFL. What happens when you take away the run from the Broncos, then you put the ball in the hands of Jake Plummer? Every time I see him, it reminds me of that weather forecasting term, cone of uncertainty. That's what a Jake Plummer <laughs> pass is like. <laughs> all right, Michael Smith, go ahead. Adonde, you might like the Chargers, but I'm sure if you looked at their schedule, you wouldn't like the schedule. In the, four, in the next four weeks, they played three of the finalists from last year, two of them on the road. They're coming to New England this week, and then they got Philadelphia, and they go to Pittsburgh. I mean, listen, guys, this schedule for San Diego is murderous, okay? And, and, and look at this division. Denver, every single year, is always there. We like to talk about, oh, Mike Shanahan hasn't won with John Elway, or since John Elway retired. And, oh, Jake Plummer's not a good quarterback, and this, that, and the other. But every single year, Denver makes the playoffs, and they get on up by Indianapolis, but that's not the point. They'll win this, they'll win this division. They always they got a running game. Dem, what are you talking about? They got fast linebackers. Bailey's as tough a cornerback as there is. This team has too much talent. They'll be there. So you do agree that you, you agree with Woody Page then? You realize that? I do, yes. All right, sorry for you. Go ahead, Mariotti. You know, he who uh, <laughs> thinks that Jake Plummer is a good quarterback is going to have his heart broken. How many times have we seen Plummer have three interception games? He'll play great one game, throw for 400 yards when he's running out of the pocket and look terrific the next game he'll throw four interceptions i don't trust this guy i don't trust the broncos anymore the chiefs have run problems against the run no doubt about it defensively trent green is not the quarterback he was a couple of years so ago who are you taking? Chris Holmes looks like he's getting old i <laughs> go with the donde i agree that if you get the ball to lt ladanian tomlinson even though they have a tough schedule i like that running game against especially against kansas city i right. think san diego will win it about 10 and back six. to you woodman well, let me ask the two people who picked the San Diego Chargers. Okay. Who did the Chargers lose to last week? The Denver Broncos. And would you trust a guy who would Good tell you Chargers you while he is standing in front of a shower curtain in his motel room? <laughs> I don't believe you, Mariotti. All right. I do the questioning here. And what? here's the question now. Let's talk about these Kansas City Chiefs. What happened to this defense? Looked great for two weeks, and it died last night, Michael Smith. What's going on? Well, again, it's, it's very early in the season. I wouldn't write off Kansas City's defense. They're going to be better, but they're not going to be the 
85 Bears overnight. Denver runs on everybody, and especially Kansas City, when Kansas City is in Denver. But one last thing about Denver, they wilted in the Miami Heat, the opening game. That's a better team than their record indicates. All right, Don, the last word. Yeah, we've seen the Chargers and not the Colts when it comes to improved defense. And, Michael, if you want to play the Patriots this week, coming off the big win and their first game without Matt Light and Rodney Harrison, this is the time to do good it. Good point, Donnie. Very good point. We're going to take a quick commercial break when we come back. Come back with buy or sell. And coming up, the Pats lose a key ingredient to that winning formula. The Marlins play the blame game. And an involuntary choke job. Stick around. Around the Horn, presented by Nissan, who reminds you to shift the way you move through the world. And in part by Garnier Fruit Juice, for hair that shines with all its strength. Buy or sell. Okay, let's get it done. First up, let's we're talking it. about the New England Patriots. Another season, another defensive back lost to the year with injury. This time, Pro Bowl safety Rodney Harrison. He gone with three torn ligaments in his left knee. Harrison had started every game for the Pats since joining the team in 2003. Guys, buy or sell the Patriots being able to overcome this injury this year. Don they? I'm buying this system, system, system. Remember, this is the team that overcame the injury to its starting quarterback franchise player, Drew Bledsoe, and wound up winning the Super Bowl that year. You used Good some backup guy there. by the name Brady, something like yeah, that. Yeah, we got what you're doing there. Go ahead, Mariano. You know what? I'll buy that they win the division because, remember, the Jets have problems. Miami isn't that good. Buffalo has problems with its young quarterback as well. But, Tony, in the big picture, you're not only losing great football players in Harrison and Brewski, but great emotional leaders. They cannot overcome that. They've got injuries on the offensive line. I'm going to sell that they win the Super good Bowl. man. Well, I, 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 the producers didn't quite put this question oh, really? properly, but I, I will buy that the Patriots will be fine. Since what I lovingly like to call the Janet Jackson Super Bowl, there are seven different people on defense that are new. There's only four remaining defensive starters from two Super Bowls ago. So, so they continue to put in new pieces, but they're not going to reach the Super Bowl this year. All right, and the producers say mute you. Go ahead, Michael Smith. <laughs> I'm going to buy the Pats overcoming this. Marriott, I'm surprised. That's your first time ever talking about New England and not saying the word Belichick. I was looking for that. Belichick. But the fact is, the coaches, they don't just coach the starters. They coach the backups. This is what they do. Ty Law goes down last Good year. Point, they plug Michael in Randall Smith. Gay. Let me educate you. If the front seven puts pressure on the quarterback, then the secondary won't have to cover as long. They'll be fine. The education of Michael Smith. Next up, our boom goes the dynamite story of the day. The Florida Marlins have lost four straight. The wild card hopes are just about done. And boom goes the Dina Matardo. AJ Burnett sent packing after some critical comments last week. Miguel Cabrera benched for disciplinary reasons. And then there's manager Jack McKeon, not expected to be back in 2006. Guys, buy or sell this year's Marlins disappointment as McKeon's fault. Mariotti. I'm going to buy that. I know blame. Mike Lowell's had a rough year. He's hitting 237, and Pierre has not been getting on base the way he should. But come on, Tony, 2003, I saw that team come into Chicago. They were fun. They were loose. They won at the Yankee Stadium, won it all. What happened? Now they're uptight. That's the manager's fault. Hire Lou Pinella. So you saw that team in 2003, Mariotti? And they Nobody won it all. Nobody else saw that team. Go ahead, Woody Page. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm buying it also. When McKeon took over in Florida, he was the right man for the right job at that right time. But now that time has passed. That man has been passed by. And that team still has a lot of talent if it's pushed in the right direction. They were in the middle of a pennant race, and McKeon let go. Burnett shouldn't have been the guy who was dismissed. Point, McKeon should have been pushed aside. All He's right. The All right, save the rest for your book. Go ahead, Michael Smith. These guys should be dismissed from this show. You got to sell this. Two years ago, the guy comes in and the Marlins win the World Series. Now, all of a sudden, you don't know what he's doing. Burnett goes 0-6 down the stretch, and that's his fault. I mean, the injuries to, to the, the, the entire lineup, Pierre, Mike Lowell, what happened to those guys? you telling me that's the manager? That's not the manager's fault. That team imploded. Smith. Go ahead, Adonai. Yeah, I'm selling. Come on, what do you would know of all people that a couple years doesn't make an old guy suddenly irrelevant? Oh. It's not his fault that Burnett <laughs> went 0-6. It's not his fault the bullpen has a 4.83 ERA. It's not his fault, as everyone has said, Lowell is going on. If Burnett wants pats on the back, like he said, try winning some games. I'm sure Dontre Willis gets plenty of pats on the back. Woody, I'm sure you have a witty retort for a Donde. <laughs> no, he doesn't. 
He's not worth What do you mean I don't? Of you course never I do. do. All right, enough out of everybody. Next up, we go to college, I wish. Talking about last night's affair in Baton Rouge. Come from behind win for Tennessee, who had volunteered a 21-point deficit at halftime. A loss snatched from the jaws of victory for the hometown Tigers. LSU outscored 30-6 to in the second half in overtime. All right, guys, what you buying? Stern comeback for Tennessee or LSU gag job, Woodrow? Well, I'd love to buy that Tennessee had a great comeback. I went to school with Philip Fulmer, and he couldn't have done a no, worse job do last night. No, it was a gag job by LSU. Here was a team, the Bayou Bengals, who had the ball within the 10-yard line with time running out in the first half. You kick the field goal. You throw the ball in the end zone. You do anything, but you don't let the clock stop. It was LSU gagging at the end of the first half. Shouldn't have been right. a game. And the clock stops on that argument. Woody, cut it down. We keep things moving here. Michael Smith, go. Yeah, but Woody's absolutely right. That was a total gag job by my LSU Tigers. Never in the history of Tiger Stadium has LSU ever given up a 21-point lead at halftime. Mm -hmm. uh, Tennessee couldn't score. They went 17 right. positions at one point without scoring a touchdown. They totally gave that game away. Can't believe the Tigers. Adonde. I'm buying this as a win for the Tennessee Volunteers, really? Woody. They made the quarterback change, brought in Clawson. He was more effective than the Ainge was. And you saw LSU Tigers just wore down there. They couldn't tackle. They, they were having trouble retort. keeping up, gasping for air. Here came the Volunteers playing in front of that what? hostile crowd. It's a mostly charged first big game in Louisiana what? after Hurricane Katrina. They overcame all that, the heat, okay. the cramping, One and they the won. Argument. Give them credit for coming back. Go ahead, back. Mariotti. Now, there was great emotion in that stadium, and LSU and Les Miles, the coach, did not – Feed off that emotion. 21-0 lead. You can't get the field goal unit in to make it 24-0. Then they went very conservative in the second half. Only two field goals, and they lost the game. Les Miles, the coach, lost the game. All right. First cut time, and it's time to drop a little dead weight, and I mean that with the utmost respect. Michael Smith, that man is you today. Any last words? Yesterday, I got nothing but love. Not everything and today, back. you got nothing. nothing Michael say. Smith goes home. The rest of you guys remain seated. Around the Horn goes deeper next. And coming up, would you believe progress? Baseball's fight against steroids? Conversation that will surely get a rise out of Mariotti if you stick around. Do that thing I like. <laughs>For a first-time offender, Mariotti. I like Bud Selig's plan. 50 games. Do you realize, reality, at the Olympics, the World Anti-Doping Agency, one offense, and you're out for two years? Uh -huh. I think Bud's plan with 50 games is an effective deterrent. How dare this players' union, with all the dirt in their house, Palmero and eight other players testing positive this year, how dare they try to narrow this down and negotiate it down? All of America, everybody's on the side, finally, of Bud Selig. I hope that Bud, the commissioner, does not turn into Bud Light and get wishy-washy here. Stand firm, Bud. Bud We're with Light. you for a change. Would man? Well, I, I think that it's clear that I'm totally opposed to steroids like everyone else here, but I think 10 or 20 games is not an issue. What the issue is, what we saw with Palmero. He was totally humiliated, totally embarrassed, probably won't play the game again. Yeah. I point, think that's more important than 10 games or 20 games. I think what is critical here is the second and third offenders. That When that happens, no. that might be the first time would be a one-year suspension, and then the third time you're caught, that would be a lifetime ban. So the first time doesn't bother me as much because we're uncertain about the testing. We know that there's okay. humiliation. Also very similar to Seelig's plan. Go ahead, Adon, there. 
Yeah, Woody, Palmero was humiliated afterward, but obviously he was not deterred enough to use the steroids in the first place. So you need a stronger deterrent at least half the season, I think. Why stop at 50 games? Obviously, this is all about just keeping Congress off baseball's back. You don't want to see a bunch of all-stars dragged onto Capitol Hill again like that scene we had in March. So Seelig's just trying to capitulate to Congress just to keep them happy, and I think it's worthwhile. We do not want to see another embarrassing scene like that. You also need to do something to change this pharmaceutical culture that Good engulfs point, baseball. Donde. Even if they're walking around with legal stuff in their syringes, everyone's trying to get an edge. If it's, if it's going to cost you half a season or more, it's not worth pushing the line, pushing the envelope, because we all know the crooks are ahead of the cops in this case. Mariotti? John McCain wants three strikes and you're out. I respect the man. He's absolutely right. Congress needs to keep the pressure on. All right. Good conversation. And now it's time to eliminate somebody from this good conversation. Adon, they very well played. Not enough points today. Sorry to say you have to go home. I'm not done conversating. What's oh, going conversate on? with yourself. I mean, I think that's going to be all right. The dream is over for Adonde. Showdown Mariotti and Paige. Two men enter, and one man embarrasses himself less. This That'd won't be, be too easy. Coming up, Shill versus Mother Nature, and the Trumpsters next apprentice. Stick around. Fort! <laughs> Around the Horn, presented by Nissan, who reminds you to shift the way you move through the world. And in part by Sheraton Hotels and Resorts. Visit Sheraton.com for best rates, guaranteed. All right, Mariotti and Paige in Showdown. This is for everything. Let's go. Yanks won, Sox rained out last night, so Boston a half game back in the standings. The rain out forces today's doubleheader and seven games in six days. Boston also forced to shuffle the pitching rotation. Show was scheduled to pitch yesterday and Saturday against the unit. Instead, today in game 162. Guys, will the rain help or hurt the Sox? Mariotti, start us off. Oh, come on. That's going to hurt them. That's extraordinary pressure to put on a team in the final week of the regular season to win a doubleheader. Plus, Randy Johnson goes six innings last night. Wakefield goes today. Johnson will be rested against Wakefield on Saturday at only three days rest. Well, let me first of all start with the fact that there have only been 17 doubleheaders in Major League Baseball this year, and the home team has won only five of those. In fact, so as a result of that, it's going to hurt the Red Sox. Okay, that almost made sense, Woody Page. The point goes to Jay Mariotti. Very well argued. Oh. Next, front page news in New York today. Donald Trump and his hottie wife Melania are expecting, baby could look something like this. Gentlemen, for the game, I need you to name the baby. <laughs> Woody Page, this is for the game. Well, there are a lot of cheap possibilities like apprentice or you're fired or tower or something like that. But I think it's very simple. You name the baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How am I supposed to respond to that? Uh, I, you you know, said, it's, of course it's the you apprentice. I could name the kid Vidal oh, because of the hair and hope that he goes and sees no, Vidal no, Sassoon, no. but it's the apprentice. Woody Page, you're going to get in trouble for saying it, but you're going to get the point <laughs> and you're going to get the win. And what does that make you? Tie for the all-time lead. Woody Page, let's hear your victory speech. <laughs> After almost three years and over... 500 shows to finally reach the pinnacle to tie Mariotti. I want to thank the ninjas. I want to thank the producers. I want to thank everybody else. I want to thank Mariotti for being such weak me today. Oh, and mostly on. I want to thank myself. That's enough out of you. We're done. See you tomorrow. We're what? What's going on, bro? I'd like to thank myself. <laughs>